Kobe Bryant is an obvious Hall of Famer. He's a five-time champion. Number eight and number 24. A top five scorer in NBA history, and his signature shots are his gorgeous, unassisted jumpers. In the simplest terms, Kobe was unstoppable. Bryant came from the Michael Jordan school of scoring, and it showed the Mamba could do it all. I've literally learned so much from him. I just try to you know, do him proud and do Jerry proud and Oscar Robinson proud and the guys who came before him because I learned so much from them. But when he first came into the league, he relied a lot more on rim attacks than he did on jumpers. Why? That jumper just wasn't reliable for the teenage phenom. Averaging about 15 minutes per game, mostly off the bench, he tried just 146 mid-range jumpers in his rookie season. That same year, Jordan launched, get this, 1,202 mid-rangers. Compared to his hero, the young Bryant's bag wasn't very deep, especially in the mid-range. But that's where the Mamba mentality comes in. Bryant was never content to just be a really good young player. He wanted to be the best. He needed to be the best. And back then, to be the best scorer in the world, you needed to excel in the mid-range. So he went to work, and by the time he was in his early 20s, Kobe had already developed one of the most devastating mid-range portfolios in the game. Nobody in league history, except for Michael Jordan, could both create and knock down their own jumpers as well as Kobe. And it makes sense that he was so comfortable with the ball in his hands, since he had the handles and the footwork to go get a bucket anytime he wanted. That came in handy throughout his career, as Bryant leveraged his unbeatable mid-range game to create and sink game winners with regularity. Backs down barrel, a step back fade, he got it at the buzzer! There is no shortage of highlights to capture his ability to break down a great defender, find his spot, and hit a big shot in a huge moment. That's all built from his tireless work ethic, which drove him to develop an endless array of moves. And it didn't hurt that he was never afraid to miss. I have no fear whatsoever. If I take the last second shot and I miss, so what? Kobe probably peaked as a pure scorer in 05-06 when he averaged a ridiculous 35.4 points per game. The only player to eclipse that mark since is James Harden with 36.1 in 2018-19. And that was largely due to the fact that most of Harden's field goals were worth an extra point compared to Kobe, who shot less than half as many threes as the Beard. That year, the Mamba averaged 12.2 made buckets per game. The biggest chunk of those buckets came from the mid-range, and most of those were unassisted. Yes, he got to the rim a lot, averaging 3.4 buckets per contest in the restricted area that year. And yes, he made threes, averaging 2.3 made triples per game that year. But the mid-range was the dominant color in the Mamba's masterpiece. That season, he averaged over 10 points per game on mid-range shots alone. Kobe's magnum opus occurred about halfway through that campaign. On January 22, 2006, Bryant scored 81 points against the Raptors. History tonight at Staples Center. It was a marvelous performance that is not only the second highest scoring game ever, it was also fueled by those solo shots. That historic night, 18 of Bryant's 28 makes were unassisted. Oh, and in the playoffs that year, Bryant had one of his most iconic performances in a first round game versus Steve Nash and the Suns. Not only did Bryant tie the game with this incredibly dramatic driving bucket at the end of regulation, but at the end of overtime, with the Lakers down one, he did this. Bryant for the win! His reaction is an enduring image. This is one of history's most celebrated buzzer beaters, and of course, it was a cold-blooded, unassisted jumper from the right elbow. Bottom line, he could not have averaged 35 per game that year, nor put up that 81-point classic, nor hit that game winner without being the best mid-range scorer in the world. That year, he made 414 of his 976 mid-range attempts, smashing the productivity of everyone else in the NBA, including guys like Dirk Nowitzki and Allen Iverson, who ranked a distant second and third, respectively. And Kobe scored year in and year out without the benefit of assists. He could dribble into pull-ups like this. He could create space with pump fakes like this. 
His fadeaways were downright Jordan-esque, beautiful, efficient, and unguardable. His spin moves were legendary. He could hit floaters, leaners, or whatever else he needed to hit in almost any predicament, especially with the game on the line. And you knew you were always in trouble when he started chewing on his jersey. Just ask Matt Barnes. While chewing on his jersey, he buries a 22-footer. If there's one thing that separates NBA superstars from sort of normal players, it's the ability to create and to convert your own shots at high rates. In his prime, Bryant was the best in the world at doing just that. His ability to score from anywhere on anyone sets him apart. He hit contested jumpers in so many different ways, it's mind-boggling. Staying outside the arc, dribbling. Patterson keeps his feet. Kobe forces. Oh! He made it! <laughs> he threw it in! What a yeah, shot! So and while players like Steph Curry may go down in history as better shooters than Bryant, that's kind of deceptive. Of course, Curry's numbers are insane, and his three-pointers are the best we've ever seen. But Bryant took and made some of the toughest shots in the teeth of physical defenses in ways that today's best shooters just don't. Even near the very end of his incredible career, Bryant still depended on these tough, self-created two-point jumpers. Check out these examples from his last season in 2016 with LeBron James guarding him. Bryant does it again! Whether he dribbles into a pull-up or starts with his back to the basket, the Black Bomba had every trick in the bag. Again, his footwork, his creativity, his balance, and of course his shooting abilities made his game just as beautiful to watch as it was effective. Like Jordan, Kobe was able to align aesthetic beauty with pure domination on the court, which helped him become one of the most popular superstars ever. As the game falls more in love with threes, one of the saddest things is that moves like this are disappearing from the NBA. They're not gone yet. You can still catch Chris Paul hitting elbow jumpers, Kawhi Leonard hitting turnarounds, or Devin Booker, well, doing a pretty good Kobe imitation. But it's no secret that the three-point revolution is costing us the exact kinds of highlights we associate with legends like Jordan, Nowitzki, and of course, Kobe. Oh, great big by Bryant. From 1996 through 2016, the 20 seasons of Bryant's career, that is, nobody converted unassisted mid-rangers like Kobe, and it's not close. If there was any doubt who has been the most dominant mid-range scorer this century, this chart should remove it. It's the Mamba. Post play is fading fast, and mid-range shooting is more frowned upon than ever, but in a way that makes Bryant's Hall of Fame case even more dramatic. He will be remembered for so many different things in so many legendary moments. He was an MVP, a finals MVP, a scoring champion, an all-star, a girl dad, a creative force, and a global icon. All of that is so true and so important. But on the court, in the context of the current era, Kobe was arguably the last true mid-range maestro. The last guy to really depend on these kinds of unassisted mid-range jumpers to win games, scoring titles, and of course, Larry O'Brien trophies. Those gorgeous jumpers got the Mamba to Springfield. <laughs>